<laughs> hey, Jeff, this is Steve. I, I have a couple questions for you, if I might. Sure. I, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of a Johnny-come-lately when it comes to the anarcho-capitalist point of view, and I'm, I'm becoming a convert here uh, daily, I'm closer and closer to that point of view. Uh, I, you know, I, I grew up in the party system. I grew up as a loyal Republican. I abandoned the Republican Party in 1996 when I felt that it and its platform abandoned me, and they have not been able to woo me back, although I've been consistently bombarded now by both parties trying to get me to connect and and resubmit to the party system of government. I've supported the government wars. I was in a I was in the military for a number of years. And in fact, even as recently as uh, 2006, I still supported the idea that it's better to fight the the Islamists overseas than it would be to let them come over here and and attack us. So, so I've been very I have been very supportive of the government wars. I'm changing my mind, and I, I think an awful lot of it has to do personally. The pivot point for me was uh, in the fall of 2006 when I read Tacitus. The Annals of Rome, and I mean, I actually sat down and read the book while I was out hunting. I know it's a great uh, hunting way, of, uh, way to hunt, but I, I read that book, and I realized that we are, as an empire, we are collapsing right now, just as Rome was. That all of the problems that Rome faced, from porous borders to people who were living on the dole to corrupt politicians to a system that kept the people divided amongst each other through party politics to the endless wars, we're doing it all. And and that began to change my mind, but it also left me with this insane sense of, oh, my goodness, what can I possibly do? Hearing somebody like you talking about making it through a collapse, it, it's encouraging to me, but I, I need something more. I need something more specific. What I mean, do I, do I need to go out and buy gold? Do I need to go out and buy guns? Do I need to get my kids out of the, the school system? I mean, what can somebody like me who's just now beginning to come around to this point of view, what can I do right now? Well, uh, the number one thing that uh, is great is that you are realizing that. That's number one. Uh, I think so many people are just going to be so sideswiped by this because they've been so propagandized for so long that the U.S. is the best country on the world and it's it's number one and it's always going to be the best and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And so when uh, as a lot of this stuff starts to collapse, it's really going to take a lot of people by surprise. So number one is just actually opening your eyes and seeing what's going on. So that's great. Uh, secondly, well, you live up there in Alaska. It's, it's, it's a lot better to live up there than in, for example, Los Angeles or New York and all that sort of stuff during this. I try to advocate to people that, uh, if you're going to live in the US, U.S. for the next couple of years to try to live away from sort of larger population centers, uh, especially places that have had problems before, like L.A. and, and that sort of stuff. Um, and, then, and then there's all sorts of other things you can do as well. Uh, definitely don't keep your money in U.S. dollars. The U.S. dollar won't exist in its current form in a few years. Uh, neither will any of the fiat currencies. Uh, that was a big experiment that failed, and it is failing right now. And then, of course, it's going to fail. Any time that you uh, draw pictures of, of people on a piece of paper and say it's worth something and use guns to force people to use it, it's not going to last very long. And that's what they've been doing since 1971 when uh, Nixon, Nixon took uh, gold backing uh, from underneath the dollar. And it, ever since then, it's just been fiat, which means uh, it, it's just only used because you're forced to use it, and it's not backed by anything. And then that's the case right now. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely, if you have some assets, uh, definitely don't keep them in dollars. Keep them in hard assets and whatever that might be. I, I like gold. I like silver. I like uh, agriculture. Anything, anything hard because right now uh, anything that the central bankers can't print is what you want to own because they're just going to print money now because if they stop printing, uh, the whole system will collapse. That's what happened in 2008. And uh, if they would have not done QE and all that sort of stuff, the entire financial system would have collapsed. Uh, it's, it's a completely artificial financial system based on debt, and the entire system is now in comp over indebted, and that's always going to be the case when you have a financial system based on debt. And so all they're doing now is printing enough money to try to fool people into thinking that it's not collapsing for at least a couple more years, and that's basically what they've been doing. So definitely don't own any dollars, own hard assets. Uh, even things like real estate are okay. At least, you know, at least you'll have something. My point of view on this collapse is the person who leaves, loses least uh, is going to win. So really think about it not in terms of uh, making a lot of money from this collapse. Even though there is ways to make money, there's opportunities as always. Uh, it's, it's more just being safe. Uh, we're, this is going to be the biggest collapse in, in human history by far. Uh, when Rome collapsed, it was just 
you know, a city, Rome, <laughs> you know, but it was bigger than that. But basically, it wasn't that big. Uh, and um, all the collapses in history, they're, you know, the Weimar Republic in Germany and all the hyperinflations and all those sort of things, those were pretty small geographical little areas. Because the U.S. dollar is used worldwide now, uh, when this collapses, it's going to affect the entire planet. And so it's going to be incredibly interesting and, and probably scary, <coughs> excuse me, what's going to happen. And uh, really no one knows what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. There's too many variables. There's 7 billion variables. There's 7 billion people on Earth. And all it takes is a few people and, and one person sometimes to start up a movement and you can really affect things, which is why I'm, why I'm trying to get this education out there, because the more people understand this, the better it will be. You know, Jeff, but, back in, uh, back in yep. 2001, uh, right before the towers fell, uh, gold was approximately $200 an ounce. I remember because I was doing the news at the time, and I remember it sticking in my head that that I was doing gold price quotes at two hundred dollars an ounce. Uh, it, that was more feasible to go out and buy some gold. Now with gold at sixteen hundred dollars an ounce, I'm thinking I might just go out and buy some little uh, alcohol bottles. You know, just I can go out there and and get a few bottles of alcohol for you know under a hundred dollars, and I'm going to have something that somebody is going to want to trade with am, am i down the right track with that or, or would you ad advise that no it'd be better to get actually like precious metals for sure that's worked uh, in every hyperinflation in history by uh alcohol and cigarettes as long as you can keep the cigarettes uh you know not from uh wasting away but yeah for sure all those sort of things are good things to own during these sort of times um uh, I prefer things like gold and silver just because if you have a fair amount of assets, it's quite hard to have a whole house full of alcohol. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I don't know if that's really uh, all that safe either um, <laughs> from a fire uh, standpoint. Well, but, I think it, uh, it's, it's harder when you when things get depressing. You might get into your stash. You're not going to drink your gold or your silver. <laughs> all right, we got about uh, three minutes left here before the the half hour break, and uh, possibly is is he only on for the half hour, Dave, or is he staying for the whole hour? Oh uh, yeah, we're just. <coughs> Just for the half hour. So uh, let me make sure that we get out your contact information and where people can learn more, Jeff. Sure. It's a Dollar Vigilante. That's just dollar, V-I-G-I-L-A-N-T-E dot com. And like I said, right on the front page, you can just put your email and you'll get our daily blog and you'll just see all these sort of things that I talk about all the time. And then if you're interested in more of the uh, anarchist, anarcho-capitalist viewpoints, uh, check out Anarchast. That's A-N-A-R-C-H-A-S-T dot com. It's like the word anarchy, only with an A-S-T in the place of the Y. Yep. Yeah, it's because it it's basically means anarchy podcast. So yep. it's a sort of a merging of two words. We have that on our uh, on our blog page, too. We're linked to you now. Um, oh, great. Can you uh, tell us about your condos just in the last uh, couple minutes here? Sure. I, uh, I live down in Mexico now at the moment, um, and uh, I have uh, a number of... Uh, uh, condos, if, if anyone is interested in Acapulco, uh, that I've, I've been trying to attract sort of more freedom-minded people to come down and, and live there. Uh, they're all very cheap. You can get a condo on the beach for about $70,000. Full Everything all new, new furniture, new everything. And uh, we can also rent them out for the uh, people there when they're not using it, if, if you want to use it just as a uh, second property or something like that. So that's uh, one of the things I do. I'm basically an entrepreneur, so there's a number of things I do, but that's one of the things I, I've been doing down here in Mexico. All right, thank you. I've already I went ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button there, so I'm going to start getting your daily uh, stuff there, right, direct, delivered directly to my mobile phone. So I'll be uh, distracted in the morning, I'm sure. Uh, instead of doing the news, I'll be reading the latest from Dollar Vigilante. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Any uh, closing comments before we get on the crazy train to the uh, bottom of the hour? No, I just want to say keep up the good work up there, you guys. It's it's important we get this sort of message out there, and uh, the more the more the merrier. So uh, I know the good work David's been telling me about what you've been doing. So uh, just keep it up, and uh, the more people that at least talk about these sort of things, the better off I think we'll all be in the end. All right, thank you very much, Jeff Berwick with the Dollar Vigilante. We uh, hopefully will stay in touch. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, and, Jeff. Thanks for coming uh, on. We are coming down to the uh, bottom of the hour here. The Fox News is on the way. Patriot's Lament is brought to you by Bighorn Enterprises. For all of your trucking and construction needs, give them a call at 451-7310. Also brought to you by the good folks over there at Far North Tactical at the corner of 8th and Lacey. Now, uh, we talked about buying alcohol. You can also buy firearms. A great way to be invested and have something to protect your investment with at the same time. And you can get those right over there at Far North Tactical. The number to call in is 458-TALK. Fox News, 660 AM. You can hear the difference.
Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. In Italy, some protests boiling over into violence. The biggest demonstration was in Rome, where anger over the state of the Italian economy combined with protests against the Berlusconi government's handling of the crisis. In the shadow of the Colosseum, there were clashes with police. Vehicles were set alight. The authorities responded with tear gas. Fox Sister Network Sky News reporter Ian Woods, while here at home, Occupy Wall Street protesters moving uptown, planning to head to New York's Times Square later today. And more American boots on the ground in yet another foreign land. The president sending about 100 troops to Central Africa to help regional forces take down the head of a violent rebel group. They'll go to Uganda and also likely South Sudan, the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo as well. The White House says they'll be there in a training and advisory role and will not be fighting LRA guerrillas directly unless it's a matter of self-defense. Fox's Molly Hedeberg, Fox News. We report, you decide. We report it, you respond to it. Fairbanks is listening. This is Local Talk Radio. It will be found an unjust and unwise jealousy to deprive a man of his natural liberty upon the supposition he may abuse it. George Washington. They who would give up an essential liberty for temporary security deserve neither liberty or security. Benjamin Franklin. The Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government, lest it come to dominate our lives and interests. Patrick Henry. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it would be because we destroyed ourselves. Abraham Lincoln. I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Thomas Jefferson. Property is surely a right of mankind as real as liberty. John Adams. The Constitution is a guide which I never will abandon. George Washington. Brought to you by Bighorn Enterprises, who would like to remodel what America is all about.